At Caraba's Italian Grill, folks always seem to be saying, Wow! Especially now, because you can take home our delicious made-from-scratch lasagna, layered pasta with meat sauce, creamy ricotta, and mozzarella cheese, absolutely free. Homemade lasagna? For free? Wow! Order one of your Caraba's favorites, Chicken Brian, Chicken Marsala, or Polo Rosso Maria, and you can take home our made-from-scratch lasagna. For tomorrow night's dinner, free? Wow! Hurry into Caraba's today and get a free homemade lasagna for tomorrow, now through January 29th. Wow! Caraba's, Italian work talking about blog talk radio hey back to normal <laughs> <laughs> it is sunday july 9th 2017 and school is officially in oh you guys it's the 10th episode 10th episode 10th episode Is that a milestone? I guess so. Yeah, it's a milestone. Ten episodes. It is a milestone. Fuck you. So, (laughs) (laughs) um, I am joined today by um, my illustrious co-host. I am Mitch. And I am here today with the never appropriating um, aunt. Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> and the always, always appreciating Aaron. Yes, I am. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> and today is the cultural appropriation show. So, first defining cultural appropriation, which is kind of a what I would call an extension of our earliest, earlier conversations about colorism. If you haven't heard us talk about colorism, go back to the colorism show. But cultural appropriation is actually an extension of colonialism because you create a dominant society where one culture is the dominant and you have subordinated one or more other cultures in that society. So what tends to happen is that, like, say us, because we're we're all three of us are African American. Um, you you do things in the dominant society that you have to do, which is called assimilating. You assimilate to be able to move around in the dominant society. However, when you take your ass back home to your hood or your people, (laughs) you then go back to practicing your personal cultural norms, whatever those are for your, and it's usually race-based, but it could be race-based. It could be, you know, like if you are a member of the LGBT community, it could be based on sexual orientation. It could be anything that, that you're practicing having to do with your own culture that you connect to. Mm-hmm. So when you appropriate that culture, you're adopting or using elements of that more subordinate culture in general. I don't like every definition of cultural appropriation because a lot of times they'll just say, like um, with, like uh, Wiki said, just using elements of one culture by members of another culture. That definition is way too loose. Yeah, it's very broad. It's extremely too broad because you can appreciate someone else's culture through cultural exchange. There isn't anything wrong with that, and it's going to happen naturally. It's inevitable. If you have Mm -hmm. other cultures moving around, which people always do, you're going to pick up other people's people's cultures, and they're going to pick up yours. That's fine. It's actually when you use that culture, when you're the dominant culture, and you use someone's subordinated culture... And they're already marginalized. And now you use their culture, usually for monetary gain. That's the biggest problem in this year. It's when sure. you use it and you monetize off of it. 
another point I think is important to mention in that definition too. Like they pointed out in the one video we talked about where they said another aspect is like when you glorify or are praised for something that another group is punished or taught to yes. assimilate against. Yes. Like dreadlocks yeah. in the workplace. Nuts. Or any any kind of the hairstyles that we wear, because that's a that's a big deal. Um, yeah. Locks, um, cornrows slash what box braids. Yeah, yeah, all of that's frowned upon on brown. People. All of that's frowned upon uh, on brown people, but then when somebody else does it, that's not in our culture. All of a sudden, first of all, it gets miscredited. Mm-hmm. Big time. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's like. Oh my God! Look what um, Molly Cyrus has created. No, what the fuck out of here? What? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a, um, an ad with some white girl wearing Tim's, and they were talking about that's the new summer fashion. I'm like, fuck out of here! Uh, hey, come on, man. <laughs> point, we all know how long we've all been wearing Tim's. Not saying Especially. that. Tim's have always been worn, period. Timbers are worn first by people who were just cutting lumber and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> but the first people to make it fashionable. All year round. That's different, <laughs> right. That's, that, that's a different All year story. round fashion statement. That's you know? a very different story, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so cultural appropriation, it's a big deal because a lot of times what you do is you make this thing exotic, you know, when when someone else of a, of that dominant culture does it. It's exotic to them and they can pick it up and put it down. I can't pick up and put down my blackness. True. I can't be black now and then tomorrow. I don't feel like doing that anymore. I'm going to be Asian. I'm going to be Asian now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can with this trans thing going on. Never mind. I'm but, leave that alone. No, like I mean, you really don't. We don't have the luxury of being Asian tomorrow. Our no. skin tone it says that we're black, <laughs> and that's I what we're pretty that. much stuck with. In, unless you start, you know, doing like that 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 German chick that I showed y'all. Oh my gosh, that is so offensive. Taking fake melanin shots. Her existence is. Is that even a real woman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like one. Aaron. Hello? Aaron. Is there a cricket? Chirp, chirp. Chirp. Aaron, you there? Uh oh. Are we having difficulties on the show right now? Oh, man. You can't cut on the 10th episode, bruh. <laughs> I know, right? Yo, Aaron, where you at? Uh, roll with it. Okay. I think he'll he'll cut back in. Nah. Um. So yeah, that she's actually a real person. You know where I saw her just recently? Where's that? On an episode of Botch. Um, but I heard about that. I didn't see it, but I heard about it. People about it in the comments. Oh, my God. I can't believe this is, like, acceptable. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yep. It's happening. That's crazy. She was talking about going to get her hair, like, knotted up and darkened. Well, and... She, she wanted a big butt, too. Oh, my gosh. Like, she... she so, she already had a... She has a huge wreck. Like the <laughs> likes that you never see. But part of the reason why she does is because she has something inserted into her where she can pump them up bigger than... That's weird. Yeah, so she's... Pump- but the, the doctor said that you, that you can't do that permanently. Uh-huh. You make yourself like really, really like sick and possibly ruin your breath. So now she's like, so she's not just doing that to her skin. Mm-hmm. She's doing all kinds of things. But for those who don't know, I forgot what her name is. She's from Germany and she has a German boyfriend. She's taking fake melanin shots and injecting herself with these fake melanin shots. And the melanin is changing her skin 
to this very odd chocolate brown color. It's so weird. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Besides that Indian guy with the fake muscles. That's weird, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can do anything. You can appropriate muscles, too. You can People go to... People are so weird. Why are humans so weird? I don't understand. I really don't. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Aaron's PC is restarting now. So so we're going to be without Aaron for a couple of seconds. So. All right. Um, it's literally, I can't even talk about how offended I am about that. You and me both, I'm disgusted by it, honestly. People sharing it like it's a joke, like this is a problem, that's a sickness. I mean, but do you think that like Rachel Dolezal like opened the door for this shit? (laughs) (laughs) Some tells me this German chick been around a lot longer than that. She has, but she hasn't been turning her skin dark. She, she just started this shit. I mean, do you think, like, Rachel was like, um, I feel like a black person inside of myself. <laughs> she connected with the struggle on a different level. That's always a deep question for me because some people really, like, we always talk about Tina Marie, and we'll probably talk about her a little bit later on because uh-huh. there's something that's, that's authentic about her. She's not right. inauthentic. Yeah, so but who's to say Rachel Dozo I ain't got so I I don't I haven't been around Rachel Dozo I don't know I haven't I haven't really listened to her interviews in depth have you nah I've heard anything she had to say other than the initial video right before her parents like snitched on her <laughs> <laughs> you ain't black <laughs> her parents are her dirty her parents just outed her like that was, but oh. they, cause it's cause they don't want her. They're like, you are a white daughter. What the fuck is wrong with you? You cut it out. Associate, <laughs> you associate yourself with these Negroes. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to read her book though. I'm gonna let y'all know about that. So you're actually gonna read that book? I'm kind of curious. I'm thinking about getting an audio book. I want to hear her inflection. You want to hear her talk? Oh no! As she explains herself. Hell to the no. We should, you know, the perfect test, get her to send in some fried chicken and see how it tastes. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That'll so let you know if she looks so good or not. So you're demanding that she, that she have, have the ability to also cook? <laughs> if she can't fry chicken, she in just the black the Now, if she actually used the right seasonings, it might be something to this. <laughs> but there's some southern white people that know how to cook. Cause they from the true. south. That's yeah, that's true. But I, mean, I think that shit. Some of that shit is just sometimes it's just southern. Get her, get her, she ain't southern. Black. Is she southern? No, I don't think so. Oh, well, she gets a pass. Wait a that. minute, maybe. Where is she from? I don't I'm know. Not, I don't know why I want to say Detroit. If you don't cut that fuckery out, no, I she's really want to say Detroit. She is not I'm from out. my hometown. Shut it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see the not. first result when I typed in Rachel. Oh my god! No, no. because that shit has been typed in a zillion times. <laughs> Everybody's like, "What the fuck is that with this crazy broad?" <laughs> I want to know what she did to her hair to get it like that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it's the same thing that like 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 maybe she already had like a little bit of a kink like how people when they like are Jewish and they have like a semi fro going on. Yeah. Like perhaps she already had like a bit of a curl. Gotcha. And maybe. some kind of texture to it maybe. But so um She's from Montana. A lot, a lot of see. Exactly. <laughs> and see that now you know. That shit is suspect right there. Ain't that many black folk in Montana for her to be well, connected said, with? Uh, Where did she get that shit from? This is according to Wikipedia. They say that um, her parents adopted three African American children, and one was Haitian. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. That's what happened right there. They rubbed off on her. She was around them, and then that's what happened. What did they expect and was gonna happen? Knew. She lived they in South Africa that, for a while. They expect that she was going to rub her whiteness off on them? Mm-hmm. She I was don't out think numbers. they thought she was going to think she was a black kid. She was out of numbers, though. <laughs> I didn't she think they thought 
I didn't think it was gonna go that far. They didn't think it was gonna go that far. She was outnumbered. There were more of them than there were. So she, she's again in that household. She was the subordinate culture, and the kids were the dominant culture. <laughs> <laughs> Now, is it that like, appropriate? We about to be black. We about to be black up in here. No, is that's that more. Um, that's actually more colonialism. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the black kids colonized that household. They colonized <laughs> that poor girl. That was like, <laughs> yep. You assimilate to this blackness or else. <laughs> that was mighty effective. That was very effective. <laughs> God damn. Uh, no, effective. but. There's there's a, a big difference between assimilation and appropriation because you'll get people that will come through and say things, and especially people of the dominant culture or the predominant culture that's that's practicing, uh, you know, their culture and that you know you need to do what they do. They'll they'll look at the little surface things that you do. In their mind, they're surface. They don't see how deeply rooted some of them are and how they're right. connected to your culture very, and they might be very spiritual. You know, they might be a lot of your rituals that are mm-hmm. very, very, you know, dear in your community, sacred, and things that help connect you to your to your other people in your community. But they take them, the, and then they just uh, go, eh, you know. Just a surface, like you said, the surface. I think a good example surface. of that is like the African, the whole African dance craze. Like people always, they they hit, they want to get in on the African dance and the process of the dance and all that, but they don't necessarily put as much emphasis on what it represented in those original cultures. Because they're not connected to it. And if and yeah. if you don't do the research, if you don't spend the time with it, you can't be superfluous when you when you start doing stuff like that. Hey right. Aaron, you with us? You there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Yay. Hey. Welcome back. Welcome back, Aaron. <laughs> He's back like mate. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't call it a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. So, so Aaron, we're talking about um, about people in, in in a dominant culture using things in a subordinate culture, like their rituals or like their chicken recipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we did find out some more things about Rachel. She apparently grew up in a household where she was. She was um, the minority because she had some African American brothers and sisters that her parents adopted. So she was actually the only maybe like white child in the household, or she was. Mm-hmm. There were one other. She was one of few, maybe. Yeah, that kind of thing happens too. It does. Yeah, it does happen. It does happen. It does happen. That's Speaking what of assimilating, <laughs> well, hey, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> but speaking of assimilating versus appropriating, appropriating, mm-hmm. that kind of brings me back to our my Eminem discussion we had earlier. Do you think Eminem is as bad as some of these people that are appropriating, or is he did he assimilate to the culture? I don't know if if I would say Eminem. He does respect the culture. I will never say that. I think a lot of what what is wrong with him and the things that happen with him do happen outside of the culture. Mm-hmm. Like they happen outside of hip hop. But I don't think that he's as authentic as he could be. Like if I put him up against Tina Marie, even though I know they're in two different lanes because we're talking two different genres of music. And right. time period. I, I always use her as a good because there was nothing disingenuous about her. Uh huh. She didn't hop back and forth over the fence. She just she just was what she was. She very That's, much just was what she was. She didn't even make pop hits. Like she made, you know, straight 
R&B music and if somebody you know picked up on that on the pop side it just was it was like somebody who's R&B who just happened to get picked mm-hmm. up on the pop side it I wasn't think, like she was I crying always, I always say that I always say that I think uh, Eminem's situation can be accredited to who he works with too like I feel like if I M was ready to ask, I was ready to ask yeah, are you saying like because M wasn't like a straight conscious rapper that and I was just getting ready to say it's moment. because no, it's he not, wasn't just no. a straight MC like really hip hop nuts and bolts I think that has a lot to do with it uh, I don't know a lot of people will argue with that because of like his going, whole, yeah, that's his whole uh, under, underground history and uh, he was on uh, uh, and battles and uh, you know the whole Detroit battle scene and all that no your history can be underground but it doesn't mean yeah. you stayed there. And and arguably he didn't. Yeah. But but that can be attributed to working with Dre. I think that's yeah, that's what I was saying. That's the point I was trying to make. Uh, see Yes and no. I think even <laughs> working with Dre, I think even working with Dre, there's still a direction that you could go in and say, you know what, this is I'm making a conscious decision to be here. Mm-hmm. And not be over here, you know. And again, he may have just been, you know. I'm just, I'm a white boy who happens to dig rap, and I'm still gonna call you the Elvis Presley of hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you can be what you want to be. I'm still gonna call your ass out for it. It's just, yeah. That, that I feel like that's one of those debates that can go on and 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 on. Because there are some people that respect him, and I'm not saying that there isn't anything to respect about him. You know, and again, he's from my own hometown, but I'm gonna be I'm I'm probably gonna be harder on you. That's probably why I'm harder on you know like other artists like Dave Loke and Big Sean. Like I want you to do better. Like you're from my hometown, I need you to shine. People really mm-hmm. love Dave Lowe. I didn't realize they, she had they such do. a... They love Dave Lowe. Lowe. She I didn't does. realize that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that, that Eminem question is a hard one. But, I yeah. again, yeah. I still feel it's, like... It's, gonna, it's, still, it's still regardless, like I said earlier, like, regardless of how the perception is now, it's like, oh, ain't nobody talking about Eminem. Don't nobody care. Like, we still got eight-year-old... Like I said, we still got eight-year-old kids. When they come up and research stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like... The, and the numbers show up, you're going to see Eminem and Jay-Z. That's the first thing they're going to see when you talk about numbers and stuff. So, like, the the perception is going to be different to them than it is to us right now. Well, I think they're that's very here there. But, but they're, no, they're, they're yeah. very predominant, or they're very, excuse me, dominant in the culture. So, I think Aaron is yeah. right to a certain extent. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. To like, regardless, that's, that's assuming that people are going to take numbers, that everybody's going to take numbers the same way. Exactly, but that's but what I'm saying. Like, now. how do you think? How do you? How do you think people like Elvis get crowned king of rock and roll because of stuff like that? Yep. <laughs> and and we all know he ain't the king of no damn rock and roll. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> and, and back then, back then, I'm sure people was having the same argument. Like, man, oh, ain't yeah. nobody going look at. It. Yeah, look, nobody gonna look at it like that. People know better. And next thing you know, you got the next generation of uh, kids coming up. Period, the time and they period perceive that it different. Play, play, play a big part in that too. With yeah, yeah, but, I think that's but I said, part. yeah, but I said something about that too because, like, um, and kind of going back on what I said, kind of, like, it's it's hard to tell how it might turn out because we got the internet now, so you know yeah. it's easier to get a little bit more knowledge on the situation than just saying, oh well, you know, rock and roll was always a white person thing, and it definitely wasn't. It wasn't definitely. Yeah, wasn't. but but we didn't. Di- you didn't hear the internet that- back then. No, that, that's true. I, I don't think, I, I, I'm not trying to say, I don't think Eminem fetishizes hip hop. I don't right. think that he is just sitting, I don't feel that way about him. I think that, I think that he does love and respect the culture. There have been a lot of um, signs that he does and he always has. Yeah, I see I that think, too. I just the think. Damage. From his fans. <laughs> well, but I think it's—I think the way in which he just—it's all in your approach. And uh-huh. as we were talking about before, the Beastie Boys just—they're white, but they approach this shit in a very different way. And it just 
when it comes off a different way, you get a different response. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that's tough about these discussions is the difference in time period. Like, I wish we had somebody now that we can compare to them in the same same climate. Um, you know what I think? You know what I think it is, too, though? I think it. I think it. I think it's that. Uh, I think it's that. Uh, that whole rush Mormon, that whole rush Mormon mentality too, because when you talk about people like the Beastie Boys, they get put in on. They don't never, they never come up in a uh, conversation with people like Big Daddy Kane and and people sure. like that, or you know yeah. what I'm saying. But Eminem, Eminem, when you talk about people like uh, yeah. people that go back far enough to talk about Rakim and Nas and Jay Z, like Eminem name going to come up with them. So and that's and that's like the perception of hip hop is like all it's like all about bars. Like all that fun shit that y'all doing, like where it's like you know, I always like I disagree said. with that. I always disagree with that. Bringing up M in the conversation with Rakim and Kane and stuff like that, I always disagree with that. Well, he's not a Rushmore. He's not in that because you guys know it's tears. So when you go to different generations, M is not in that generation. So and M is like a shock rapper to me. M's a shock rapper to me. He yeah, is, I he know, but the, he's one hundred percent a shock perception. rapper. But the perception when people talk about him is like, you know what I'm saying? Like his lyrics is on par with, you know, like his lyrical ability is definitely on par with people that we that we put, you know what I'm saying, in that uh in that stratosphere, like, you know, uh the Nazis, the Rakims, the big puns, you know what I'm saying? People that, that's like what that. I disagree with. That's what I disagree with, because I wouldn't say that because I wouldn't put him there strictly on content. Well, you yeah, wouldn't you, put him there you and wouldn't. Some people, that's some yeah, that's people what I'm saying. Put I disagree with that. Some folks yeah, would put him that. there because um, like I was having a convo with my friend last week and they heard our show about conscious rap. So a lot of folks have this aversion towards um, actually labeling things. So they just want everything just to be whatever it is. So they're going to keep bringing M up because they don't categorize him as a shock rapper like we do. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right. Like they now, just M and Red him. Man? They just M and Red Man? They don't, yeah. I see... They don't put Redman. I don't put Redman in those conversations either for the same kind of reason. Redman has, but they don't see him as a shock rapper. They look at him as a bars. Mm -hmm. Depends on how you qualify bars, I guess. Half Aaron just said, <laughs> just, just, just yeah. oh, he's like a just a, a straight lyricist. Like uh -huh. that. I, you know, I even put him like in a lyrical miracle. I yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely category too. But, but. I don't always push lyrical miracle people in the category of like dopest MC either because they're doing something that's like more of a novelty to me. Right. Agreed. Agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah, true. And nobody want to hear that shit all the time. Well, according to Ant, some people don't want to think all the time. <laughs> Nobody want to hear what you think. I didn't say that. That's a quote from one of your students. No, I'm saying that's what I meant. Of course, sorry. According to Ann, one of my students in our class one day said, "Don't nobody want to think all the damn time." <laughs> so I mean, does that, that make Nas? Does that make Nas a, a, a niche rapper? Because he makes you think. <laughs> oh God, but, that's horrible. But, um, so so. <laughs> Back to um, being subordinated and assimilating. Mm. So, do we really think Eminem assimilated? Is that what we're saying? Like, are you saying because he was like in an all-black neighborhood or something? Or are you talking about hip-hop itself? Uh, both, actually. I don't know how young he was when he started growing up around black folk, but... I know I've grow, grown up with white kids and they definitely assimilate in those situations. Anybody does. That's a, that's Anybody a very, does, yeah. It's a very human thing to do. And, and like Aaron mentioned earlier, like Eminem, he did the whole underground rapper thing with the underground background, the independent mixtapes, the battle scenes. He climbed the ladder. He paid the dues. He did. He did. Yeah. There was some... Um, them, I was talking to me about some other thing. I, I, I won't divulge all of it, but um, apparently he his rhymes didn't always stand out. That's true. I've all. heard some of his stuff, and it was but I've <laughs> heard. Yeah. Some yeah. Yeah. But that's right. exactly that's what I'm saying. He climbed the ladder. Even he his freestyles now. His freestyles now ain't always ten for ten. Yeah. 
you know? So, I don't know. How do you guys feel about this? Is the, the Eminem conversation about assimilation versus cultural appropriation is always a hard one. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think he appropriated it. Yeah, okay. I don't think he appropriated either. It's definitely assimilation. You could tell just by the way he talks in interviews and stuff like that. Yeah. So he carries himself. Yeah. But I think the time frame, like if he would have, if he would have came up like two rap generations before, he may have been a conscious rapper. Possibly. You think so? It, it depending on the climate that he came up. That's why I say I, I kind of like the hard part about these discussions is the time frame. Like I feel like he's a student of the, the Rockefeller era, if not a little before. I don't know about that, cause like it seemed like uh, it seemed cause M got old shit from like '88. I did. I done heard. Yeah, I'm talking about when he started popping up. Like the time, yeah, but, he, time he was competing yeah, in was but, based on when he started. Yeah. When he started. When he started, yeah. when he started popping, but like if you like from what I can tell about the Detroit rap scene, it's a little independent. Like what I was saying about how it is in it Philly, is. like where yeah. where people yeah. where people people more so they they try to uh create their own lane. So they do. I don't but know. Philly, Philly, like like scenes like that, they have their own criteria that they gotta fulfill too, uh, independent of the widespread culture. Yeah, but you have to understand too that even though he may have started out that way, look, look at Jay, he started yeah. out that way. He yeah, just, that's he what I'm saying. Ended up that way. That's what I'm saying. The climb when he actually you know. started out, out here yeah. competing with well, the big yeah, names. Yeah, yes, exactly. When he was he had popping, things he had to do. He, yeah. then he became a product of what was going on at that particular time, and he was working with Dre again. Right. So we all know right. all those mean all those things mean something. Like, like, what if Dre wasn't the one that picked it? Like, what if he got put on by somebody that wasn't Dre? What if he hooked up with high tech? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what if M hooked up with no ID instead? It, yeah, right. and I've heard, and yeah, and I feel like a lot of um M's content just fit into what uh, Dre was all about too. Because I heard that um the reason that Rakim album didn't happen was because you know um. Dre wanted, you know what I'm saying? Dre, Dre wanted a darker sound from Rakim, and it's like, well, Rakim because, was basically like, yeah, Rakim, like, like, what, like, what you yeah, expect? I don't do that shit. What do you want me to do? This is what I do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like, you can't bring Rakim on and then, like, that's like, oh my God, I got to do it again. Okay, let me hit the button. Uh, that's like <laughs> when, <laughs> when Puffy, <laughs> when he, <laughs> when, when he signed, um, new addition to Bad Boy, and then he tried to one twelve them. Like what? Right. The- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How you gonna one twelve new edition? One twelve is new edition. You can't make new edition be one twelve. What the fuck? So, so that's a that, that's a different question. So about it's kind of a different slant on cultural appropriation. So maybe M did go in and because he worked with a certain person because uh-huh. just like Tupac was a conscious MC when Tupac goes over to death row he has he to their culture. he has to <laughs> appropriate or, or he has to assimilate yeah, what's assimilate. going on over there because if he doesn't he can't be on death row talking about you know Black Panthers and you know, put right. down the guns, brothers and sisters, and you need to. He he got to do death row shit on death row, and I said yeah, that's that kind of that's kind of scary when when you think about it though. Like you know, why is that always the case with um uh, uh labels like death row and bad boy? Because because it's the culture, it's it's the culture of what's going on over there. That's one yeah. great thing I will say has changed about the music industry today because labels don't seem to be as prominent in the artist image yeah. anymore. Well, now everybody just does the same thing. You either trap, 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 trap. Well, when I said that, I was thinking about TV, Top Dog and Sandman specifically. Oh, okay. Because, like, Schoolboy is as different from Absol as Absol is from Kendrick. I get what from, you're saying. I yeah. from Yeah. yeah. Like, there's not, like, one image of that label. That's true. Um, but but there's still issues with things sounding the same. Not with true. those particular people. True. Because, yes, true. Absol and Kendrick and Schoolboy Q sound completely different from one another. All of them. 
They do. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That the M question is always a difficult, very very hard one to deal with. Yeah, I think it's hard to have with his fans in particular. Oh please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I mean, like, okay, for, for instance, I guess, you know, we talked about assimilating and, and like, you know, to, to fit in and, and make sure you do. So that's why you can't look at the oppressed minority culture and say, oh, they're appropriate because everybody, because that's like the next thing people will say, oh, is that, oh, you're appropriating my culture. We're not appropriating your culture. We're assimilating so we can survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't wear slacks to work because I want to. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't I don't not wear my big 10 foot afro to work because I can't. Right. Exactly. Uh, well, you know what? It's funny about that, though. Sometimes it's, it's time and context. If this was the 70s, I could wear my 10 foot, 10 foot afro to work. That was the trend. Exactly. It's just mm-hmm. now you can't do it. Because people are still offended. <laughs> well, it's because it, it, it's a trend. It was a trend at the time, and everybody's not doing it anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like, yo. So, so okay, question. I, I watched those two vids, and people were commenting on blind weaves. They were like, blind weave is not, is not, um, assimilation. I don't think it is. I just think it's tacky. <laughs> <laughs> it's just tacky. It, so it, it, it. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. <laughs> well, wait a minute. And, and here's what, here's how I rebut that. If I walk in with a blind weave, will that be acceptable? It would be acceptable, more acceptable than dreadlocks. And that right there, that's my issue with it. Because if I can walk in with a blind weave and be accepted, it's because a blind weave is closer to something that looks like something that you already do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's It's still a little, it's still a little, it's still a little off putting though. Same as like with the red, uh, the red drawn, like our, like we were talking about with Charlie Baltimore and shit. Nah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that shit is off putting. It's like, I mean, yeah, like you said, you assimilating, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, by, by wearing your hair in that style or whatever, but it's like really red hair, like blonde hair. Like, it it's is like. It's definitely you know. very off putting sometimes, but I still think that as long as that is going to get a pass more so than me walking up in here with my. with the, with, with styles that are visibly akin to my African heritage mm-hmm. I still think that that counts as you know, you assimilating you know, what I just realized is messed up too like if those same dreadlocks that you're getting in trouble for now were blue nobody would have a problem with it mm. what you think so you think I not think so. I think so. I think like, I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Goes, like, cause like when you talk about to like pushing the envelope, oh now now you're just like a stylish, unique, crazy person. That's, I don't know about all that. Sometimes, sometimes when you dye them colors, like I've seen women who dye their locks blonde, and they do get accepted better. Mm-hmm. Like faux locks are accepted more than real dreadlocks. Yeah. Like the yarn on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, some of this, I mean, some of the extra stuff is accepted better, but it's still, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, like you said, we doing it because we because got to survive, you got to get a job or whatever. So, like, I think in most cases, you're going to get looked, taken for a joke more so than, <laughs> mm-hmm, like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it's also dependent upon what industry and where you, like, if you're working sure. in corporate America, you know, and you're trying to move in and out of corporate America or any industry where you have to be seen and you have to be in business, business, then yes, you're probably going to, like, you, you can't wear, you know, a big 10 foot afro. If, yeah. you're working in, <laughs> if you're working in, like, you know, something that's more the arts or entertainment. 
or something like that, then you can, like, there's more leeway for you to do what you want in those arenas. Is it safe to say that the uh, Afrocentric thing is like becoming more in, in, in the, uh, more acceptable again? Uh, you know, because of all this, this quote unquote all this wokeness. All this wokeness. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think I think a lot of things are being pushed more to the forefront because of all this wokeness. Because it's just start people. Are, you know, there's so many social warriors out there. There's so many people. Right. That are pushing, um, you know, because they're they're marginalized and they're saying we're tired. And that's one of my biggest issues with the the dominant culture making comments like that. Um, who was that chick's name again? The, the, um, uh, the Roman Roman millennial. Millidiot. Yeah, the, the Roman millennial. <laughs> the Roman millennial. <laughs> And she was like, well, you didn't complain about this before. Man, yeah. F-O-H. Fuck out of here. Yeah, I, that video was inflammatory. It was, it was intentionally extremely, inflammatory. It, it was so incendiary. Yeah, I'm starting to I'm starting to <laughs> learn some things about this, like, this recent generation. Like, it seemed like the younger, the younger the, the person, like, the a lot more idiotic the statements become like <laughs> <laughs> well because a lot of them haven't lived through or seen anything Aaron like you right. have to remember there's a lot of stuff that they have they're about to on it, your but ass. like they don't it's like it's but like they, they don't have- even talk <laughs> yeah like they don't even they don't even like communicate with like you know people from that particular time period or you know what I'm saying people that uh understand the situation uh, from a first person perspective, they well, just not real. They don't have to. Yeah, it's but just like I'm gonna go. It's like just go on YouTube and do my thing. Like it's crazy. And, and and that's the issue is that there is there's spaces that have been created for them where the only thing that these millennials have to hear is the sound of their own fucking voice. Yeah. Mm. Well, that that has not always been the case. Before social media, before internet, before any of this, you couldn't just be in some bubble with your own dumbass thoughts polluting you constantly. Like you had to be a part of a larger conversation. Um, but that that first period and so out to lunch is going to be interesting today because it <laughs> seems like so many people are out here just culturally appropriating like a motherfucker. Left and right. <laughs> Left and right. <laughs> Who we got? Yeah. Um, I think at the top of the list should be America's sweetheart, Miss Katy Perry. <sighs> what she do this time? <laughs> this time, no, she's just racking up quite the body count. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. It's to the point where I even question if she's aware of it. Nah, uh-uh. <laughs> like, oops. Uh, no, nope. but she's been no because she keeps doing it, and people keep yelling at her and checking her. To, so the, no, no. So is that like a case of any publicity is good publicity? No, it's a case <laughs> of I'm a fucking and I, I hate. I, I'm gonna say this. It's a case of my white privilege. I can do whatever I want because I'm whitey. No. Uh. Not Katy Perry. Not Katy Perry. Like, like, like why are you? Why are you? No, I've seen her in interviews. Like, I, I don't know if you saw that one interview where she was talking about how Obama's no longer president. And everybody should just get over it. Nah. I was like, what, bitch? <laughs> 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 what is that supposed to even mean? Yeah, I don't I don't really follow too much of Katy Perry, so I mean I don't know what she's been getting into lately, but um Well, that whole geisha performance that she put on a while back, that was enough. Oh wow. Cool. She did that too? Well, she did. Yeah. Yep. And she, she got it wrong. She had like Chinese influence in her outfit too. Yep. Oh wow. But see that's so my she, point. So, like, if you're gonna do yeah. that, you need to go talk to the people of that culture. Get it right, at least. Get that shit right and align it. That you're not 
there twirling a freaking right. I, what I think yeah. is, is her um she's wearing a geisha outfit are those um parasols <laughs> I think those yeah. are, I think those are Chinese. Yep, and that was part of the problem people had with her. Another part of the problem too, though, was like the song that she chose to perform in that set. Yep, yep, because that song aligned itself up. the The song's message was about a woman who like did anything for her man, and so it kind of perpetuated this, this. Um, the the image of the yes, yeah, the stereotype of the of the passive Asian woman who does whatever her man says and oh wow yeah, like, she well, got, yeah, yeah she got yeah she got real blatant got real with it huh <laughs> but she thinks it but thought it was okay though she thought it was like she didn't understand that there was anything she thought wrong. people were gonna be proud of her okay so what it says is she says. I won't ever understand some of the those things because of who I am. Uh, I will never understand, but I can educate myself, and that's what I'm trying to do along the way. No, but bitch. she should do that before she gets out there on stage. Yes, damn it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's just like me. Like I just said, I don't really follow the chick too much, and that's like me writing a book about her life. Like. <laughs> And getting it wrong, wrong, wrong. And she's, Katie has always slapped the cornrows in. She slapped the cornrows in her, in the, um, the damn bop in. Yeah, she oh, yeah. yeah, I've seen that before. She love. I mean, she, she just, you know, not saying but, other people but, haven't done it. Yeah, I've but seen she's Gwen the only Stefani one do some shit like that. I've seen Gwen Stefani do, you know, she she's done a lot of that kind of stuff too. But uh huh. Like I said, Katie backing up like that. You know, I'm gonna tell them that I don't think Katie's gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an aspect of her career now. I think it's the aspect of pity. Uh, excuse me. Can y'all hear my fan? I'm not going to have to turn my fan on. It's real hot in here today. I can't hear it. All right, cool. I feel like he's going to appropriate your fan. <laughs> Please don't take it. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> um, oh, my God. So, the other one, of course. And then Katie... The latest one in this line of of white artists that like hop over it's because it's dominant in the music scene right now. It's like advantageous. Yep. Because yeah. like almost do it. nothing else is, is is you know existing. Like some pop artists are still out there making it, but they're like hopping over the fence. Yeah. You know but they all they all got this formula with it though like they they cut their hair short <laughs> they you see them in a rap video true. that's very true then they start acting yeah, I, I've been, I've been, yeah I've been noticing that too like is that like becoming a thing see that's why a lot of this stuff be scaring me because I'm like is this done on, <laughs> this shit done on purpose this shit ain't by accident at all it's a no, formula it's yep it's a, it's a whole formula they cut their hair short they get on stage, turk a little bit. They pop up in a couple videos. Then and then, they, you know, start so trying to date a member of Migos. Uh, <laughs> 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 but then when they're tired of that, when they don't really blow up like they used to or the rap community yep. is tired of them, they go on interviews and throw rap under the bus. And that's, I'm tired of that. That's annoying. Like, don't act like we could rap thing, and, and, and for that, and you're right, for that, I think Miley should also... Absolutely. Be on an out to lunch list. Mm, tomorrow, oh, uh, I had to change my life and get my life together. Like your life is fucked up. Here. Here. F- when you first oh, came yeah. over, right? <laughs> I don't remember accepting you know, her buddy, in the rap culture. Ain't nobody dragged you the fuck over here. 
<laughs> yep, that's what um, makes it so crazy. That's what makes the whole situation look so crazy too, because it's like you know, um, I had to get my life together. You know, what I'm saying I was going through a rough patch or whatever, and then you start talking like you know everything was everything that was going on with you was just bad because you was dealing with you know this black people. particular. Yeah, there you exactly. go, and that kind of my life, is that uh, my life was was um right right. And I jumped over the fence with all these people. And I'm like, it's so bad. I to get it together. I took a, a rod on the soul pole. And I need to stop. <laughs> but, like, we had nothing to do with that. Like, you're just using us as a scapegoat. Uh, not a damn thing. That's crazy. You start to want to twerk, bitch. And that's harmful <laughs> to the community. Because it, really it reignites is. It reignites this image that hip-hop is, like, point is bad or is negative. Yep. And she wants those to align the negative images in hip hop. There's right. a whole that's a, segments in hip hop that aren't negative. Yep, that's another thing about it though that pissed me off because like I feel like in a lot in some cases like um we like you know uh, us as black people need need to check that shit at the door like you know what I'm saying like you know three six mafia you do not need to be embracing that shit. We we kind of got uh, bum rushed by Molly Cyrus though. She came in. She did come in like a wrecking ball. Did we really? Oh, I'm sorry, Ant. Just stop that. <laughs> but I'm talking about. See, but I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the dudes. I'm talking about the dudes that allow that shit. Yeah. I you did there. <laughs> she 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 slid her foot in the door though, cause like she started. She really started that shit with Robin Thicke, who who kind of slid his way in the door. No, see, I think Robin is. Robin is more along the lines of, of like what Tina Marie is. He's never think, done. He's never I've, been on the other side. He's always I been where he's, he's at. I think he's I think trying to appropriate what Tina Marie did. Uh, what? what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's taking the ball. He's taking the ball. He's trying to. He's trying oh, to. He's no, trying to appropriate no. what Tina Marie did. I don't think he's trying to appropriate what Tina Marie did. He's trying to appropriate <laughs> a, a, a white dude that that's really a black dude on the inside. That's what you saying. <laughs> basically, basically, you know, <laughs> he thought Paula Patton gave him a free pass. Oh no, I think that that's just who he is. Some people that's just who they are. Yeah, you know. And, and um... I don't think he. I don't think he actively tries to make things that are poppy either I think that he just kind of does him and then it it ends up where it ends up I don't know I thought I thought the same at one point but that whole blur, blurred lines thing kind of changed my mind I don't know I think blurred lines just blew I mean okay look yeah, at the other blur, side. blurred lines was one of those it was one of those things that uh got really out of hand like that's not that's not typical for his career it's not that's uh-huh. not typical like especially those type of songs, like those type of songs, are not, is not typical for him. You know that. Well, I mean, before he was all on Oprah show, like you know, like when 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 his second album came out, people were already on him. Like, oh, we love Robin. He was all on Oprah show, singing songs to women, and they were like, oh my god, Robin sick and passing out. Like, but he was still doing his brand of what he did. I think nah, that's yeah, just he didn't. Yeah, he didn't switch over like Miley, like from the Disney Channel playing no. with her guitar and shit. No. <laughs> if she was even he playing was. her t- guitar, was she he playing went her? out back with a guitar talking about, you know, achy breaky anything. And then all of a sudden he's hopping over the fence. Right, yeah. Like, that's just Robin. He's always been like that. I don't know. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> If anything, he's gonna be hopping over the fence from where he was already at, which was here. He was already over in the R&B realm. He would be hopping the fence over into their side. I wouldn't put a pass on. Oh Lord. I wouldn't put a pass on. That's I don't so Miley. Know. Yeah, Miley. Miley definitely took an L with that. Who's worse, Miley or Katie? Um, Miley. Katie ain't throwing us under the bus yet. I think she kind of did, though. She keeps yeah. coming back. I think it was like, oh, oh I'm kind of done with this whole thing. Like, she got on stage with, with, with Migos, and everybody was like, what are you doing? 
Nah. And she wasn't as outlandish as Molly was either, though. No. Like y'all said, Molly, like, pulled all the super negative stuff. She was doing crazy stuff, though. She was. Like, yeah, Katy Perry, like, yeah, she pretty much all over the place with it. Like, you sitting there with the whole, the geisha thing, the Egyptian thing, all types of shit going on. Like, yeah. Uh, the flavor of the week. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. So, the, well, I, I guess that's the biggest thing with her is that she's done it multiple different ethnicities and cultures, keeps doing it. At- She's going to find the one that's going to blow up for her. Everybody's complaining about it already. Yeah, she in the way. What about them What about them appropriating Kardashians? Uh, they seem to be uh, making it to irrelevance. Not, not not the um the little one. No. Make t-shirts. Look, you know they both wear box braids and and you know long black girl nails and lip injections. Li- yep. Kylie and them lips. Yeah, that whole That's lip sad. injection That's thing is crazy. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't get it. I don't even have... I don't have lips that big. I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, why do you... Just... Why do you need to do that? Well, I mean, her lips yeah. were like... That's what's, that's what's, that's like kind of funny. That's kind of funny, though, don't you think? I do. What? I do. They turn like themselves you say, into... You don't have lips as big as her. They turn themselves into caricatures of what they think black people are. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the point I'm trying but, to make. But, but, that's, but that's part of the whole cultural appropriation. They don't even have a true understanding. Like, every time me and Anne talk about those obsidian pictures that you see of dark-skinned black folks where they oiled you up in some fucking Vaseline and Crisco. Yeah. And took these, <laughs> took these the pictures. The Crisco, though. Like, <laughs> I mean, you can tell they're glistening. The fuck? Like, how yeah. many times have we seen those pictures? Like, that shit is... I know you want to, quote-unquote, appreciate. Are you appreciating or are you appropriating when you do that kind of stuff? Like, that's a caricature of what you think you need to play up about our blackness. Look at that beautiful black skin. Let's throw some oil on it to make it shinier. That's what's uh-huh. great shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Auction block all over again. Right. I don't know. I seen. I seen. Her, I seen her lips before the injections too. Yours probably still fuller than hers. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're fuller than hers. But you know, like before the before pictures of her. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what makes it so crazy. She got, she got some Angelina Jolie Jones now. <laughs> that's crazy. No. With those lips. I mean, but it's exotic, right? It's edgy. It's edgy. And when I don't want it anymore, I can just let the, you know, my lips go back down and I can be white again. Can, is that a reverse? Can, can you reverse that process? Reverse that process? I guess. Her lips, yeah, you can. You can go get her lips. I mean, her lips going to stay like that the whole, like forever, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but like is it, it's going to have, like, uh, bad effects, though. Yeah. When you just go back to the doctor and you have that shit dealt, you know? I guess. Have them take care of it. I mean, look, you know they're the kings and queens over there of going to the knife. So yeah. You got a whole woman, a whole woman <laughs> that's a man over there now. So, now, so... <laughs> Does that count as appropriate? That count as- <laughs> I'm not even gonna touch that shit with a no, ten foot pole. He, 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 he did not assimilate. He's transgender. It's completely different. He assimilated their gender. Oh God. <laughs> well, see, and, and then here's my argument. I'm on Rachel Dolezal on the out to lunch list too. Is she 
doing the same thing. Well, she was the president of that particular chapter of the NAACP. I don't think oh she would have had that job if she was an outright white woman. Outright white woman. Outright white woman. And there, there are white people associated with the NAACP. There were some people who are white that helped found the organization as well. So right, right, if she right. wanted to work with black people, it was like she, she had up front. to be black. Should have been up front about it. But her stance is not that I want to work black. Work. Her stance is not I want to work with black people. Her stance is that I am commit color. <laughs> That's a fan. In my heart and soul, just like in Bruce Jenner slash Caitlyn Jenner now, she was a, a a woman inside, and Rachel Delazal said, I am a black person inside. I'm a black person. I feel like if she just kind of came in and thing, even as a white to announce that she wants to be a black person that she could have just done it <laughs> probably in these times yeah we didn't tell Tina we didn't say Tina Reed get the fuck out of here you can't come over here you can't make nah. R&B music for us we accept her wholeheartedly yep I feel if, if, if Rachel had a, just you know what I'm going to be around all black people. I'm going to work in their organization. I don't think anybody would have given two shits. No. I'm going to marry me a black man. Everybody be like, oh, hey, how you doing, Rachel? Yeah, true. But made a fool of herself. Look, when you read her book, Aunt, you tell me what her <laughs> reason is behind that shit. I want to know. That's my biggest question about it, really. I like your phrase, soul pole. Well, people have been saying soul pole for a long time. Like, like they (laughs) would even talk about Tina, like, like you know, she took her out on the soul pole, and I'm like, Tina did more take her out on the soul pole. She didn't just go get some black dick, like you know, like allegedly Miley or Katie did allegedly. Like, you know, they were she was in it. You know, she wasn't no hopping back and forth. Yeah, she never did that. Her daughter definitely has a black father. Like, you can look at her daughter and tell she's mixed. Mm hmm. Yeah, Tina claimed all that. Yep. So, I don't know. Um, so that's. Uh, out to lunch. We're heading into second period. So, what do you guys think about the counterpoint about some of the points that the roving millennial made? <laughs> the roving millennial. I mean, obviously, I think it's all BS. I agree. But, like, what's some of the stuff that she said in particular that, like, got your goat? One thing she said that stood out to me was like people who argue for cultural appropriation are arguing against assimilation and otherness. Mm. I'm like, what kind of, what are you trying to say? Like, being an individual is something wrong? What are you trying to say? And another point that she mentioned too was like, um, what about all of the white, uh, cultural images that get appropriated in her opinion on Halloween like cowboys and shit like that and I'm like that's not the same thing when you go dressed as a Native American nah that's like completely different um, well cowboy is a profession right exactly it's like going as a police officer or a mailman yep I think I am offended by that. I yeah. certainly am. Are you yeah. saying that all, cowboys are, that, that all cowboys are white? 
Fitch? I can't think of the young brother's name. What was the brother's name? The first black cowboy or the first famous black cowboy? There's tons of black cowboys. What does that That's even what mean? That's the famous one. The famous one. The one that they teach you in school. They give you one in school. <laughs> there are there were way more than the black cowboy. There's one well, in the one. They always give one, one in school. See that that's a false equivalency. That's what I don't like about like there was there are tons of false equivalencies in that. Like a, a zillion of them. I really really hate that. Okay, so you William pick it. They'll pick it. Okay, oh, okay. That's, well, that, that's, about, the, that's the one they teach you about. But there's way more than just that one. I believe it. I believe it. But there's all kind of cowboys. There's there's black cowboys and there's Asian cowboys and yeah. Mexican cowboys. Right. In Asia in Asia I think they just call samurai, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying even over like over here during the times when people were cow wrestling and cattle wrestling that was done by a bunch of different people of a bunch of different colors and ethnicities and races. Exactly. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's always been yeah. like that. So you so associate like that's, that's a good being example. a cowboy with being white is bullshit. Exactly. That's a good example. Like you say, you either a white. You either, if you're a cowboy, you're either white or you're blue ticket. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, that that isn't something that 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 you can actually associate based on race. That's the false equivalency. That's the issue. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Whereas wearing a Native American headdress is one hundred percent associated with Native Americans. The fuck. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And she mentioned she yeah. mentioned like St. Patrick's Day in, in defense too. But like one, even if you that one that, actually would be accurate more. I don't. I only know white people that celebrate St. Patrick's Day. True. Well, <laughs> I don't well, think I, mean, I know. You'll see I don't know too many people, people there, outside. She's saying that aren't Irish, meaning yeah. is what she's saying. Well, what's she talking about? White people then? <laughs> she means that it's not Irish. You know, we'll get out there like people who are Italian, people who are any. Well, first of all, you don't have as many people who are quote unquote white who always celebrate their own ethnicity true <laughs> i hate to say this but like what part of like white culture hasn't been appropriated from somebody else besides that oh, hobby oh, horse racing we looked at earlier i mean that's i think all, that's all irish people. <laughs> irish people you know irish people and like italians and polish they do have like if you are a white person who is still moving around in your own ethnicity they do have mm-hmm. they have cultural things that that are that are germane to their culture but there's so many of them that have abandoned all of that in favor of western whiteness yeah well, the true. western whiteness is what I'm the western whiteness is what I'm asking about like what makes up western whiteness what's something that's Ain't no such thing as that, Ant. Everybody everybody, everybody had ethnicity at one point. Everybody. Yeah, that's what's funny. That's what's funny about it, because if you ever notice, like, that's where most of the, um, the, the, the complaining and the criticism about, um, uh, cultural appropriation is coming from Western, uh, uh, Europeans. But it's because they've given up what culture that they had tied to their ethnicity to just be white so now Mm. they're just kind of hanging out there with nothing that ain't my fucking problem (laughs) look you should have stuck to eat more like like, go do what you were doing yeah, I don't think I ever heard like like you don't usually hear like Italians or people or Scottish folks like complaining about that type of thing like uh uh-uh. I'm like I'm tired of hearing about you know uh, cultural appropriation and like they don't I don't usually hear that from them. No, they're actually mad because when you see Italian Americans getting pissed every time somebody comes out with a new mafia movie. Because <laughs> they're because they're like angry once again because all, you're painting us as mobsters every two seconds like that's the only yeah. part of Italian culture and you will see people who are still very proudly Italian speaking out against it. 
Yeah, I I agree to that. It's the it's the ones who are who have given up their ethnicity, who are not aligning themselves with their ethnicity, like being Italian or being German or being Polish or being Irish in favor yeah. of being Western and white. Why why do you think it is that um the argument is usually uh more so uh black and white like, though? Like it's never like like, it's never, like I don't usually like I don't like I, don't, like, I mean I'm sure they're out there but I don't usually see like too many Asians complaining about oh, here yes, we go. They're the ones that jumped on Katy Perry. So yes they do. But well, the difference is they don't they don't really express too much fake outrage like everybody else does either. Like when they jump on something, it's something legit. Um Everybody else's narrative is very different in this country. Mm-hmm. Nobody's narrative is our narrative. Only people who I would say that have that kind of narrative is like Native Americans. They got they got a gripe too, uh, as they yeah. should rightfully so. See, but that's see, and that's that's another issue that we gotta handle, like in the black community too. Like we gotta be of the same mind as those type of people. Where like I feel like in other other cultures. They're quicker to say we're supporting this and we're not supporting that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Uh, all all together. Like, whereas though in the black yep. community, it's always a debate about it. It's like, nah, I ain't supporting that no more because they make us look like that. And then you got somebody else that's like, you just you just want to be mad about something. And then you got somebody else that's just like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway because ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. Like, it's always some type of debate amongst us. It's never like a one well, mind we used thing. We to have a collective mindset, but remember, once we de- desegregated, that those are the those are the um, unfortunately the um, effects of of desegregation. Like we're no longer that strong unit anymore. Mm, yeah, yeah, true. Sad. But, and I'm gonna say this, speaking to our narrative and why our narrative is different. Okay, and people hate to hear this, especially people who I talk to sometimes who are white because they don't like to hear this. the The reason why subconsciously our narrative is different than other people and how they treat us is different is because. Their, their history in this country with us is them owning us. That's right. why. Yeah, pretty much. So they feel like everything we do subconsciously belongs to them. They're not going to tell you the truth that that's what it is. But that's what it is. And it ain't like, oh, the Irish came over here. Because that's one other thing that the um, roving Melidiot was talking about. How the Irish were oppressed. If y'all don't stop with this Irish people were oppressed shit. (laughs) Even though they were, they got treated pretty shitty. They got treated shitty, which is completely different than being being owned (laughs) by another person. For almost three to four hundred years. That's a very long time. Being in shackles and chains. Be- Look, this shit isn't even coming close. I need you to stop again. The false equivalencies. No. Not here for that. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, that's that's also my argument with it too. Like, and that's why, I, like, I feel like you know we shouldn't be afraid to say stuff like that because, like, you always got you know those white folks that's like. Well, that you know, uh, Afros make me uncomfortable. Or stop talking about this um, Afrocentricity stuff because you know that's what's wrong and it, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't give a fuck if you're uncomfortable. Like you could sure be uncomfortable don't. for five for five minutes of me explaining some shit to you There's compared to you years. know the five hundred years of enslavement and yeah. shit like that. So, well, that's that privilege think, talking again. Yeah. I don't think five, ten minutes of uncomfortableness is going to, you know, make a difference on Not your at life. All. Not at all. Not at all. Well, I mean, that's partially why you have all these, you know, white males all of a sudden now crying and talking about how they feel marginalized. Because Boom. they've had... Boom. Well, because they've had to feel for ten seconds 
what <laughs> right what everybody else had to feel what for everybody a long else time. had to feel <laughs> for a long long ass time <laughs> and it's not even real oppression right. <laughs> it's just right. it's, not, it's not oppression at all what it is is a level playing field fuck out of here your feelings man I can't. I really can't do that. So, I do think I agree with you guys. I think a lot of things we have to stop being fake outraged about. So, uh huh. Yeah, I think that's a big problem. Because it's like the boy who cried wolf. Yep. I can't remember that that um that one quote. Oh my god, it's by a um. It's by a, a activist, a black activist. I think he's, is he alive still? Um, it's a quote about, um, um, about how, <laughs> unfortunately, we, as black people, we get, we get, um, serious about silly things, and we're silly about serious things. I um, I, yeah, I heard that recently. As a matter of fact, I can't think of who was it. I'm getting ready to look it up, though. But we have a really big ass problem with that. I, I can respect that. I blame I blame that on uh with uh Boyce Watkins talk about a lot. He talk about like this um this fascination we have with uh celebrityism nowadays and it's like it's like super unhealthy like that's what i blame that on like we have like such a fascination with like uh fame and money that we don't even we don't even focus on the the bare minimums like the basics of i've always had a problem with that i've always had a problem like that y'all talk about we'll talk about um rumors and stuff like that celebrities personalized and i'll be the first to say like i don't usually follow that stuff I don't usually keep up with stuff like I've always had a problem like that. Like outside of the art, I see no reason to dig into a person's life like that. Um, yeah. I would agree, except for that's kind of what we do <laughs> a little yeah. bit. But but like, yeah, it's, it's point, different. Like, there's a lane for it. Yeah, it's a it's a different it's a difference. Like, and I think I think you know I would I would like to think that the three of us are a little bit more responsible. Like, whereas though like we don't put a lot of stock into like you know what this person doing this week or you know like um like like just too much energy into the to the point where we living vicariously through a whole nother person yeah, that we know, know nothing that. about. Yeah, that's what's so, going on now. That's true. You're right. It's one hundred percent correct. Yeah, like we don't, we really don't do that at all. We don't do that. We, we just, we don't. We are fine with our own lives, but the issue is that so many people are not they're not with their own lives. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Their own lives. So they, they have to be through something else and so so let me ask you a question what's the difference between um oh oh it's um that quote is from Neely Fuller Fuller Mm -hmm. but the the black people being about serious things and serious about silly things is a new okay. quote. Right. Um, <laughs> I guess then my question becomes because we were just talking about this is is pandering appropriate? Is what pandering, is what's that? Can you create your own culture? Pander your own culture? Absolutely. <laughs> There's some shining I mean, examples. Would it be pandering or would it be appropriate? 
different if you appropriated your own brothers and sisters or your your own culture. Like if you were inside of the Italian culture, you're Italian, and you're like, all I'm going to shoot is show is gangsters and you know mobsters and Italian people shooting and killing each other. Are you now either a, are just a vulture or are you appropriating your own culture? I think I think you're a vulture who's vulture. exploiting your culture. Exploiting your culture. I don't know if I'd say appropriate in it, though. Yeah, I think it's probably the better way. Can you appropriate your own culture? That's because my question. It's already, it's already your culture. But if you're, if you're still using the negatives of your own culture to make money off of them. I mean, you're not, you're not like, taking it. It's but you're definitely you're exploiting it. Definitely. Okay. First, you you have to be outside of the culture before you can. Yeah, create. I I guess that's a because I, mm. I had a similar question about people like uh, like Jay Z, who's our favorite person in the country. <laughs> well, no. That's when we get to the pandering episode. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely pandering. Definitely pandering. Yeah. Um, so, um, come out of second period. For recess today. Are we, uh, are we unanimous on recess? Huh? Are we, are we unanimous on recess? The recess candidate we talked about? I I sure, why not? I'm good. The, the Wu, Wu-Tang Clan for recess this week. The Wu is for the kids. The Wu-Tang <laughs> Sword Style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think they appropriated the Wu-Tang Sword Style. You can't one does not simply appropriate the Wu-Tang Sword Style. That requires years of training and mastery. <laughs> I really love how you said mastery. <laughs> it's true. It's training and mastery to master. It, it, it also requires so careful application of um, lace front wigs. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen those movies? I love those movies. Yeah. They were rocking some lace fronts like in the seventies. How did they get them, Sean? <laughs> they made them. They made them by hand. Those shits was popping. <laughs> One of my favorites being the Master of the Flying Guillotine. Oh yeah, I love that. I love that movie. They, I mean, they studied that shit for years. They, they were fans of it. And like between mad boxes of cereal, <laughs> it's like that. That's and all games they of chess, apparently. Yep. They studied uh-huh. that shit, and they were they were students of it. Yeah, and they and, and what they did is incorporate it into what they were doing, not just you know. Uh, did it? Uh, the where, where, yeah, not just yeah, not just scratching the surface not and wearing it for all. a second. No, they got the principles. That the principles was their back. whole like. They named themselves Wu Tang Clan, mm-hmm. and their whole st- now. But let me ask you this question, okay? Along those same lines, because we're giving them, what's the difference between them and say the Rolling Stones? Studying the style of Muddy Waters and then naming themselves after a Muddy Waters song. And then being completely immersed in the kind of music, that whole soul, like the early R&B, like actual rhythm and blues. Right. What's the difference? That's my question. Um, I think the difference is in the execution. Like mm. how they did it. You know? Like, there was no secret that the Wu-Tang drew influence from the whole Japanese martial arts culture and whatnot. Yeah, I don't think it's a secret with the Rolling Stones either, though. Like, it's not. They were, they're pretty it's open about it. It's not a secret, but it's a lesser known fact. 
I think most people know, but I get where you're going with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like at the forefront of who they are. Um, Wu Tang, they I mean, they're black. Their name is Wu Tang. <laughs> that raises questions in its own. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and they, like, this, and they, like constant. You need what? You need video so you can see my um my bad lip syncing impression. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> my best kung fu flick impression. I wish we could actually show um think, like some, think, some uh, Wu Tang videos where they actually they actually incorporate that shit into the video. <laughs> do you, do y'all think that uh, think stuff like that? Uh, causes people to uh, culturally appropriate, like influence other people to do so. Even, even like people that like influenced by Wu Tang or like you know that uh, that happen to like Wu Tang because you know rap don't always have like the most in depth fans. Like you got some right. people that just scratch the surface of it and they just yep. like, oh that's cool. Let me, you know what I'm saying. Let me try that too. You're I like that, yeah. right? And then when you got when they got people looking at them funny, like no, that's not cool. It's like well. <laughs> You know, I got it from the Wu, or I got it from the Rolling no, Stone. Like, Stop that. I can, you know, yeah, complete. Yeah, I can see that. It, it does. I think it does happen. Yeah. It does. But I think Anne is right. It's a difference between being immersed in something, and and then the way you execute it out of reverence and respect. Mm-hmm. If you're a poser or a dabbler, I think it's just very evident. Yeah. Like, like, like Real. we're talking about Miley, or like, like, or like Katie. Every two seconds, she got somebody's different shit on. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, today Real. she's Real wearing a kimono, her. and you know, tomorrow she got you know some henna on. Like that is that's not what Wu Tang is about. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. You think Katy Perry was influenced by Wu Tang to try that shit? <laughs> uh, no, I do not. She was influenced I think by she watched Crouch and, and I, I think she watched Crouch and Tiger, the Tiger Hidden Dragon too many times. And and, and said, "Wow, that's a good idea." <laughs> right. Get the fuck out of here, dude. And again, coupled with the fact that she didn't just don the costume, she associated geishas with negative Asian stereotypes for women. Yeah. yeah I, I think I have a bigger problem with that than I do the fact that the costume. Well, the costume ties in with that because they're geisha costumes. Yeah. yeah, you can't have one without the other. Mm-mm. But she could have did the geisha thing with a different song. She could. I've seen my has done all these things before. She's also a dabbler. But times were different when Madonna did shit too. Um, she like well, like she didn't do this stuff in the age of fake outrage or the age of outrage period. Yeah, yeah, Madonna was definitely one of them, wasn't she? I mean, if you look at some of her videos, she's actually worn kabuki makeup and she's wear, worn, you know, the robes. She's worn the geisha costume. She's done it. Mm-hmm. But she ain't Go have. She, she wasn't able to have. She wasn't able to have outraged Twitter fans back then. <laughs> they didn't have Twitter. <laughs> she got hate mail and snail mail. She got hate mail. You ain't got to look at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> she did probably get that because she's. I mean, she's done some shit to piss, to, to, to piss some people off now. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially what's the one? What's the one with the uh, the cross in the video? And, yeah, I was going to say, like a prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. a prayer, yeah. But, she, but she's Catholic. Like, she was right. raised Catholic. She's, so and she's, she's exploiting Italian. her own culture. So that was, that, that, was my, that was part of the reason why I asked the question. Madonna is herself Catholic, and I believe, and she's um, uh, Italian, I believe, or she's either part, she's at least part Italian. She is part Italian. I think her dad is Italian. Yeah. The last thing she got it. Is, yeah. Uh, I can, yeah, I can. I figured she was something else. She don't, Madonna ain't no straight up white girl. 
She's Italian. Yeah. So that's the question. She's you know, she was raised Catholic, and now she's is she just calling Catholicism into question, or is she she's not appropriating it? Is she is she herself was raised Catholic? Yeah. I don't know. I might have to listen to this song again. Or no, like watch the video because the video is what you're like going to be looking for. Yeah, true. It's more the symbolism was in there. Mm-hmm. Just like, um, what's the name? Like Jay Z's um video for, um, the story of OJ. For which one? Yeah. Oh, the story oh, of OJ. Okay. Yeah, I mean, people people using crosses in their videos have always been a big issue, though. True. Like, Anytime for whatever you drag reason. religion in, it's always going to be a big deal. Yeah, pretty much. I want to commend the Wu-Tang on bringing um, the Wu-Tang sword style to my <laughs> consciousness. Thank you. Thank you, Wu-Tang. And many other things that have to do with... Um, um, Asian culture. I would also like to say that um, they are huge over in Asia. They're so they got people. The so they got the, the yes. They have gotten the approval of of many, and not saying everybody approves. Yeah, you know what's um, you know what's funny about that too. I was thinking about what Anthony was talking earlier about uh, that cultural exchange shit. <laughs> And um, I don't know. I kind of see that with the Japanese culture because a lot of times, like you, it's it's a lot of hip hop that's going on over there. It's a lot of you know what I'm yeah, that type Absolutely. of thing. Like you got like hip hop uh, producers like Nujibis and stuff like that, and like even you know, um, uh, uh, rap groups that come out of um, uh, Japan and uh, Korea and stuff like that. But that's dope though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that part of it is fine. It's you know, it's when you throw on some kabuki makeup and then start walking around in a geisha costume, pretending that you're subservient. Yeah, my problem, my problem with people like the Roman Millennial and Katy Perry and all of them is like, why don't they understand it? Like, why, like, why don't they get that <laughs> privilege? <laughs> Like they don't Pretty see the much. difference at all. Nope. But I mean, if you but if you've been the dominant so long, you don't. A lot of times, you just don't understand why that would hurt somebody. Especially as we talked about earlier, you've already abandoned your own ethnicity and culture that was tied to it in favor mm-hmm. of something that's almost cultureless. Yeah. yeah pretty much. So if you've done that, you don't get why somebody else is so attached to their own shit. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. You know. So to them, it's not necessarily a big deal because what do you mean it's a big deal? I left my shit behind. Why isn't it a big deal for you to do the same thing? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess that's the mind. I guess that's the mindset, but it's still kind of it's sickening. <laughs> it's sickening. Yeah. But um, so that's our show today. And homework for next week. We're going to be reading the late great um, prodigy. I'm going to be reading his autobiography. My Infamous called, Life. Yep. Called um, My Infamous Life. Yeah. And so, if you are so inclined, please read or you can get the audiobook where he actually narrates the story. That's what well. I'm doing. I got the audiobook. Yeah. So far, I really dig it. I like it. Me too. Mm hmm. And it's not that long if you listen to the audio, but it's like, what, how long is it, Ain't Like seven hours, maybe? Uh, no, it's like five and a half. So that's not, that's like nothing. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's cool. Yeah, I already read it. I'm going to recap, though. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, spoiler alert. 
okay? <laughs> not gonna be telling you spoiler alert next week. I mean, we're just gonna start talking about it. You're like, I didn't read it yet. Well, yeah, we just gonna go in. Catch just gonna go in. Oh wow! <laughs> For some reason, I got I got um, Ilsa's dynamite when you like that. That's what got into my head when you said that. <laughs> I don't know why. Elephant's dynamite. <laughs> so tired. Um, and next week we'll be talking about, you know, my infamous life. And it's not going to be a critique so much as us, you know, just paying homage, paying homage to our fallen soldier prodigy. Yeah. And probably, you know, talking about why Anthony must mention D Black in every show, which he didn't this week, and I'm so proud of it. What? I'm so proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that really fit into this conversation. Uh, no, there was no D-Block going on here. The other thing he talks about off off tape that y'all can't hear about is is Black Thought top five that are alive like every freaking Period. time. He- <laughs> <laughs> Period. I can talk about that all week. I know you could. He and everybody's top five. He's just not. Or a top ten for some people. He should be. I don't got no room in, for him in my top five. Eh? <laughs> well, let's, discuss it. Let's, discuss it. let's edit it. Break it down. Look, when we get to the conscious rapper list, and I, he's on my conscious rapper list, though. So. Okay. Yeah, when you break it down like that, yeah, I can see that. He is, but I, he's not on my. Like, I mean, I'm. You guys know I'm a golden era girl. This, I got people I got to put in that that top five that I can't put him in. Yeah. But <laughs> I can convince you, or I can try to convince you otherwise. I got to stick, you know, Rakim up there and Big Daddy and, you know, I got, and Grandmaster Cass. Like, where, that's like right there. Mm-hmm. How many is that? KRS, that's four right there. Uh-huh. And then, and then Black Thought. No. No. <laughs> you think there's room for any uh, females on uh, Mount Rushmore? Should be. Light. Absolutely. Light should be on, Light should definitely be on Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Be on Mount Rushmore. Like, is there any other females that's like lesser known that should, that you think should be there? Missy. Like, I would I would argue like Roxanne. No. Missy should not be there. I like Antoinette. I'm telling y'all, Antoinette was like a female Rakim. Yeah, she can get busy. She she she, she could get busy. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I like Roxanne Shante, but. I don't know how I felt about her flow all the time. And I feel like some of the times because Big Daddy wrote her rhymes, I'm like, does she kind of rhyme in his cadence a little? Mm. Time to time. Mm. Okay. Well, let's break this down more when we talk about um, talk about the, the uh, Mount Rushmore topic later. So that's our yeah. show. And... We happy everybody joined today. We hope you tune in with us next week when we discuss Prodigy's book, My Infamous Life. And school is officially out. Peace out. At Caraba's Italian Grill, folks always seem to be saying, Wow! Especially now, because you can take home our delicious made-from-scratch lasagna, layered pasta with meat sauce, creamy ricotta, and mozzarella cheese, absolutely free. Homemade lasagna? For free? Wow! Order one of your Caraba's favorites, Chicken Brian, Chicken Marsala, or Polo Rosso Maria, and you can take home our made-from-scratch lasagna. For tomorrow night's dinner, free? Wow! Hurry into Caraba's today and get a free homemade lasagna for tomorrow, now through January 29th. Wow! Caraba's Italian work talking about i wanted to be a cowboy as long as i can remember i love the animals i love the land i love the challenge that nature and the economy everything throws at you on a daily basis and loving what you do being able to make a living doing something you enjoy that's that's my definition of success 
I'm in it because it's in my blood. Whatever drives you, wherever you are on your journey, whatever you're in it for, we're in it together. LinkedIn, you're closer than you think.